Hi, I'm Daniel, and before the episode starts, I want to briefly talk to you about the Garden Outreach Project, a WCF program focused on putting faith into action. Our mission is to inspire and support Christadelphians in North America to share Christ's love through outreach initiatives. This is done by facilitating national and local outreach activities, supplying resources, and providing funds to help brothers and sisters serve those in need. For example, in 2020, over 40 ecclesial groups participated in our Bags of Love initiative, which saw over 800 sleeping bags distributed to shelters and those without a home. If you, your ecclesia, or CYC want to learn more and get involved with our latest initiative, please visit our website at www.thegardenoutreach.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Garden Outreach for the latest news and encouragement. And now, here's the show. So for today's podcast, I'm going to be talking to Melinda Flatley. Hi there, Melinda. Hello. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend some time talking about outreach. But first, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your ecclesia? I grew up in Massachusetts in New England and went attended the Springfield, Massachusetts Ecclesia as a young person. And next week, I'm going to be celebrating my 59th anniversary of my baptism. So I've been around a long time. We've moved around a bit. We, we were in a very small ecclesia in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Then we moved to Columbus, Ohio, where we were basically in isolation. We were almost three hours away from Paris Avenue. So we tried to start an ecclesia there, and then we got transferred here to Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh Ecclesia is about 35 members. It's been here a long time, and it has grown very rapidly in the last, oh, five, six years. Families have moved in for work and mm-hmm. school, and we've got a sort of a new mix of people and people eager to do work. That's great. Mm. And I know your ecclesia has been involved in quite a few different outreach projects. Do you want to start off by telling me a bit about the Adopt a Highway program that you've been involved in? About nine years ago, the and I wasn't even a member at that time, the ecclesia was discussing how we could have more of a presence in our community. And someone had done an Adopt a Highway cleanup through work. And another one of the brothers took on the job of finding out about it. What it is a county program, the Allegheny County, and they have a lot of roads going throughout the the county. And they um, have this program where you can sign up to your group to to clean up the highway. Now, they require you to do it four times a year Mm -hmm. and they provide all of the garbage bags, the vests and gloves. And after the cleanup, we put all of our bags underneath a big sign in town and they come and pick them up the next day. So it's very easy to do. And for that, we get this nice sign at the beginning and the end of our route, which says this highway is being cleaned up by the Christadelphians. And for some reason that has, people have noticed that, I guess, when I stopped yeah. in traffic. Yeah. Um, it's about a two mile stretch. That has given rise to people asking us questions when we have our other outreach programs. And we were not able to do these two things for the last year because of COVID, but our town has a street fair with maybe, oh, 500 uh, tables yeah. um, and they closed down the road and we put up a booth uh-huh. there and we have a literature table. We also have a theme. The first time we did it was a water theme, water of life. And we had a fishing game for kids and flyers. And while people were letting their kids play the fish, we were able to talk to the parents. So it was yeah. the captive audience. And they had to take our flyer because we were doing a nice thing for them uh-huh. <laughs> and handing out bottles of water. And very many people said, oh, Christadelphian, that's who you are. And it just gave a great introduction for us to be able to talk about a little bit about the name and and what we believe and where our hall is just up the the road. And a similar thing we've done with a smaller effort is in the next town over, a farmer's market every Thursday in town. We only did it once a month, but the market is there every Thursday and we set up a similar table. And it's really less than a mile from our hall. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to 
have people tell people direct them to the hall. We hand out a little craft for kids and then we can talk about our Sunday school. So it's, it's just our effort to get our name out into the community. Yeah, so that sounds to me as though you're outreach just doing something without an agenda for the community, keeping, keeping an area clean mm-hmm. has automatically generated conversations about who are the Christadelphians, yes. which yeah. then when you do People will preaching, stop. Yeah. People will stop and say, thank you. And then we have a card that we, we hand out and just to take advantage of all of the contact points. Okay. Yeah. But just the fact that the name is then known makes it easier then for when you do your preaching effort. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and the other preaching effort that we've done is right on the, the wall outside one of our doors, the door to the basement. It's maybe five or six feet from the sidewalk. And we put one of those real estate boxes that has a cover on it. And we put pamphlets there mm-hmm. and it says, take one. And over the course of maybe five years, we've had, I keep guessing, not an exact count, but about 60 pamphlets have been taken. And yeah. what I like about that is that I didn't hand it to anybody. They voluntarily came and, and took it. So it was mm-hmm. more of a interest. Yeah. Through the litter picking program as well, once people can see that you're interested in the community and doing something for the community, perhaps they'll be more interested in um, what the church there has to say. So yeah. it sounds like a, a win-win. And it's been good for our, our ecclesia as well. It's a, a group effort, all ages, although the county doesn't want anybody under 12, but we have a very safe section that even younger children will go with an adult and split up and uh, do so we come back and have pizza and it's just a really nice uh, togetherness that's one thing I I love about outreach is that everyone can be involved no matter how old or how young Mm -hmm. I was talking in a different podcast to Heather Logan Kelly over on the Oregon coast and there are only four members in her ecclesia, and yet they've oh, wow. been able mm-hmm. to join in some of the national projects that we put on, like the Bags of Love, mm-hmm. because all they needed to do was order the sleeping bag, make contact. They were already in contact with the Devereaux Centre and had quite a lot to do with them mm-hmm. and take the sleeping bags along to those who, who need them. So, yeah, I like the fact that you might be isolated in a family or a small group, and yet we can mm. still do these things and serve right. together mm. with the high adopt a highway program. I think that's, I've seen that pretty much. We have that here as well. So it seems yes, a lot of places do it throughout the States. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if somebody was interested in doing that, they could just Google adopt a highway and see what category. Those, those words would get you to whatever they call it. I would think in your area. Yeah. And you talked a little bit about the young people joining in as well. So how do you think everyone's been impacted through doing something for the community? Well, I think that doing the Adopt a Highway is is really easy for people to ease into outreach. You don't need a lot of scriptural knowledge to do it, and yet you're doing something well. And you only need a little bit of of how to talk to other people. And we've always got the young people hooked up with older groups so that we're Mm -hmm. modeling the behavior. Another thing, when recently, when we, before we did our our fairs, we had Bible class uh, three nights and three weeks in a row of how to write an elevator speech and was one of them. And then how to, what of our our core principles and, and what, Bible passages you would need to know to to do that. So it was like a tutorial on on talking to people because I think a lot of people are very uncomfortable. I said, "Oh, what if they ask me what I believe and I can't t- tell them about it?" Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. we we tried to increase the comfort level of uh-huh. everyone in the ecclesia. Uh, we did some role playing, and so that was yeah that was very helpful. That's useful because often when you're doing things in the community, people will ask you. I know that an ecclesia back in the UK, Hereford, they just had a collection point in their hall for um, sending clothing and necessities to refugees over in France and Calais. So members of the community would come into the meeting room to donate and then 
the next sort of question was, oh, Christadelphians, who are you? Now, Mm -hmm. that wasn't why the Ecclesia was doing this. It was genuinely an effort to help refugees. But I feel that when we start helping, it just generates a natural conversation rather than a forced conversation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little side effect. (laughs) Yeah. Now, I know in Pittsburgh, you also got involved in the Bags of Love project last winter. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about why you got got involved and what happened? The reason we got involved is because you started the program. We had never thought of anything like that. And it was like, this is a no brainer. It's so easy. And so we we that wasn't on our radar screen at all. But uh-huh. we said, we have to do this and we'll, yeah. we'll figure out where they're going after, after all. And so we did a, a bit of research to be able to find someone that would, that would help. And we found this woman called um, Suzanne. She does, she does a thing called Saturday Suppers and she brings hot meal to um, the homeless that, in Pittsburgh. And they, a lot of them shelter under the bridges and, and, and um, overpasses and so we hooked up with her and she took the sleeping bags and they were gone in a day (laughs) so I'm sure yeah Yeah. and did you go out with her as well not yet we have we are going to arrange to do that yeah it's the some of the one of the CYC leaders wants to take some of the kids out so that they will actually these are kids of we're all kids of privilege (laughs) so that they can see how others live but we got some wonderful pictures of people holding their sleeping bag just smiling yeah Yeah, I saw that that was really heartwarming god willing this coming winter we're going to be doing the same thing so if you're still planning to go out with Suzanne we can hopefully send some more sleeping bags along with you We, we put a pamphlet in the bag and we put a card on it and then we we did those the accessory bags what are you calling those? care packs care packs you did that as uh, well uh-huh. yes we did that as well and we had one of our members is a watercolorist and she did a special watercolor for it and a bible verse on it. so getting people involved with their individual talents that you might not think would be something that would be good for outreach but yeah that's lovely did you give the care packs to Suzanne as well or was that um... yes we did yes so yeah. right and what sort of yeah. stuff did she ask you to put in those care packs toothpaste toothbrush we, we put a snack uh, everyone every family did 10 right so we ended up having about 60 of these bags Excellent. and so if they were different everyone's was different but some people put a comb in uh um, sewing kit, you know, just yeah, yeah, which you could find, yeah, something that would be useful. And what do you think was the impact on your ecclesia through doing that outreach work with the sleeping bags and care packs? Well, it gave them the uh, people the attention to be out, out of themselves. Last summer, I I did a, a review of a book called Autopsy of a Deceased Church for Tidings Magazine. And one of the things that this author warned about is that your church can become like a fortress against the world. And because we want to keep the world away from our children or from ourselves, but then we give a very unfriendly aspect. And that's one of the things that actually causes churches to die. So I think that this outreach that we're, we're doing is getting people's people thinking more about that they can be out in the world, but not of it and help people. And so I think it, yeah. it helps with that dynamic of being the fortress. Yeah. And the I, other thing I, is your church is going to die is to puts all its money into comfy pews and AC and all that. And so if we could direct some of our money to others that are less fortunate. And I think it has its biggest effect on the children. I'll tell you about my granddaughter, who is three, saw an ad on TV, which was showing homeless people and the, the age kept going on and down. So there was a little baby sitting there on a, on a sleeping bag. And she said to her mother, Mom, they have one of our sleeping bags. We help them. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, isn't that delightful? But we would have never known that she was even observing this. Yeah. So we really are encouraging each other to develop a compassionate faith. I I like what you said about we can 
have our ecclesias as a kind of fortress to keep people out in a way if we become too insular and exclusive. But one of the thoughts I've had over the recent years is that reaching out actually enables a healthy separation to God uh, by paradox. It, for example, James says pure religion and undefiled mm -hmm. is to visit the widows and the fatherless and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Some versions don't have the word and in there. So it kind oh. of reads pure religion and undefiled is to help the widows, the fatherless, in order to keep oneself unspotted like from that. the world. Yeah. Now, I don't yeah. know whether that's a, you know, it's all Greek to me. I don't know whether that's <laughs> me playing around with the words or, or just going with translations that I like. But yeah. I think the end result is actually, it does that, it, it's separation in a positive way, like Jesus was out and amongst right. people who might not know God yeah. and might not yeah. be interested, but to help them, whoever they are. So final question. I don't know if you've um, exhausted everything you got to say, but why do you think that outreach is an important part of following the Lord Jesus Christ? He asked us to do it. He modeled it. And then he told us what would happen if we didn't in uh, Matthew 25. Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer, really. You just you know, if you absolutely understand. to treat everyone as though they were the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> whether yeah. they're familiar to us or, or not, whether right. they're members of our church or not. That's what I get from Matthew twenty-five. It says do good to the household first, but all yeah. to all. Uh huh. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? <laughs> I don't know. Anything else you want to know? I do think, here's something that I think about, that you have to be proactive about your outreach so that when a situation arises, your automatic thought is, what can I do to help? How can I, you know, make this happen? And I think that's something that you have to consciously start to do and then, and then make it a habit. Because if you don't, then, you know, a lot of things go by and you go, I could have helped, but I didn't. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I, I think we've got to be intentional. I mean, just mm -hmm. going out of the house and to do grocery shopping, where I live, I'm pretty much guaranteed that I'm going to see someone affected by homelessness on the street. So... If I'm being intentional and I see someone near the supermarket, I can say, is there anything that you need? Mm -hmm. But I know of people who perhaps have a McDonald's food voucher in their purse and people who carry care packs in their cars. Yeah, I haven't got around to the care packs in my car, but I, I'm feeling I must do that because I dropped my son off an outdoor class he was doing yesterday and as I was driving back the sat nav took me on a route that I don't normally go and I thought well I can ignore the sat route sat nav and go the route I know or I can try something different so yeah. I tried something different and it took me past a lady with a child probably about two or three years old mm. and she was holding a sign up saying please help family in need and I happened to have a Safeway voucher with me not for that purpose it just happened to be wow. in the car so I was able to talk well have a kind of conversation with her it, she was Romanian so we were using oh, my. Google <laughs> Translate oh wow yeah I always think there's not much in the grand scheme of things but I think if we can just do a little and listen yeah. to someone and make them feel valued then it all, all helps. And I thought, again, I must get some care packs or something and <laughs> yeah. put them in my car. I have some upstairs that are half made and I, you're reminding me to go do it. Yeah. Because uh -huh. so. when the opportunity comes up and I'm not ready, I'm then kicking yeah. myself. Yeah. Do you suppose that it was a coincidence that you went that way? <laughs> that it was no, God I, <laughs> I don't. At the end of the day, who knows? But I always right. prefer to see these things as... God guiding us in our lives yeah. to places where we can help. 
Yes. And it's a test, and if you passed it, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been nice talking to yeah, you, Melinda. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much.